Good afternoon. Um, my name is Dr. Christopher Howard. I'm one of the consultants at University Hospital Coventry in Diabetes and Endocrinology. And as part of our work around World Patient Safety Day, I've been asked to come and talk to you about insulin and insulin safety. Uh, you may or may not know that this year is also uh, 100 years since insulin was first used as a medicine to treat uh, diabetes. So we are celebrating multiple things uh, this year. Um, I've spoken a lot over the years about insulin safety, but it's always useful to bring it back to uh, key messages and key safety principles. So I'm going to focus particularly today around these six steps to insulin safety. Um, what's important to remember about insulin and diabetes is that within the hospital in particular, diabetes is very common. Roughly one in six patients in a hospital bed have got diabetes and around a third of those patients in hospital are also on insulin. Insulin is a part of treatment for both type 1 and type 2 diabetes, but for type 1 diabetes it's very important. It is a life-saving, it's a life-prolonging treatment which is essential for our patients. So the first of these six steps to insulin safety is a right person, ensuring that, as with any medication, that the correct uh, patient details are on any prescription that you do for insulin. The second uh, step to insulin safety is around prescribing the correct insulin. There are an increasing number of insulins that are available and every few years we have newer names, newer brands uh, coming in as, as the options for insulin treatment widen um, to make things challenging for the uh, clinicians and, and staff looking after patients. A lot of these names are very similar. Uh, Humulin I and Humulin S have very similar names, but they are completely different insulins. So it's very important that you double check with the patient and their, prescrip and their prescriptions um, that you've prescribed the correct insulin for them. The third step to insulin safety is around dosing. And this is where sometimes we see um, some prescribing errors that can potentially cause harm for our patients. Every patient uh, with diabetes on insulin has their own personal treatment plan. One dose of insulin for one patient does not necessarily apply to the next patient that you see with diabetes. When prescribing, it's very important that you are clear and accurate with your prescription and importantly, never abbreviate the term unit to you. Um, there have been uh, patient safety incidents where the U has been mistaken for a zero and 10 times the usual dose of insulin has been given to a patient and we really must be clear with our prescribing to avoid this. The fourth and fifth steps around insulin safety are ensuring that we give the insulin with the right device and in the right way. Out in the community patients will either be having their insulin using disposable pens or reusable pens and disposable cartridges. You may also come across patients who are having insulin continuously through subcutaneous insulin pumps, although generally they will self-manage that if they're admitted to hospital. Uh, when prescribing your insulin, it's important to record cartridge or disposable pen, as this is important when the patient gets discharged from the ward. Um, and it, when administering insulin on the ward, we will have the option of either using the patient's own pen or drawing up insulin using uh, our own insulin needles and syringes. We have dedicated insulin syringes for drawing up the dose because the concentration of insulin is very high and it's important that the correct syringe is used so that the correct dose is administered to the patient. You must never draw insulin up using a standard, uh, standard syringe. It must always be an insulin uh, specific syringe. We also around the wards, it's important that you look after yourself and reduce the likelihood of a needle stick injury. If a patient is self-administering insulin using a uh, pen device, then they can use a standard insulin needle as long as you do not handle the needle and the patient puts it into a sharps bin. If you are administering the insulin using a pen device, then there are safety needles that are available and these will protect you from injuring yourself with the insulin pen. Um, the last important thing about insulin pens or uh, insulin cartridges is that you must never use an insulin uh, syringe to draw the drug out of a pen device or a cartridge that should go into a pen device um, only using an insulin specific syringe when drawing out of a vial. So the fifth step to um, insulin safety is making sure that we administer insulin in the correct way. This is not only the needles but also the injection sites. 
that we use. Uh, we advise our patients to avoid any fatty areas um, when injecting, known as lipohypertrophy, because these can affect the way that insulin is absorbed into the body. So always make sure that the injection site is clean, that you're using a fresh needle, and that you allow the needle to remain in the skin for at least 10 seconds after the pen device in particular has been uh, used. The final step in uh, the six steps for insulin safety is around uh, dosing um, time. Uh, insulin, by and large, is given with food. Uh, Rapid-acting insulin is always given with meal times, and mixed insulin uh, is given usually with breakfast and with evening meal. If there is ever any doubt, insulin should be given uh, with food. It's very important that we don't prescribe fast insulin uh, late at night when a patient isn't eating, and the same is true for rapid-acting insulin. The only insulins that are given outside of meal times are your either intermediate or long insulin, such as Lantus, Traceba, or Tegeo. I'd also like to talk to you today about the management of diabetes uh, in palliative care and particularly how that relates to insulin treatment. Um, there are some good guidelines produced by Trend UK which you would encourage you to read as they go into a lot more detail. But as with a lot of uh, management in patients with palliative care, we have to be pragmatic with what is appropriate for a patient, remembering that blood glucose monitoring and insulin injecting as well as tablet medications can be very intrusive for someone who's approaching the end of their life. Uh, so there are some key principles that we think about when managing end of life uh, care and diabetes. Uh, principally what we want to try and avoid is any symptoms that come from either high or low blood glucose levels and targeting our treatment to have the minimum intervention as uh, needed. We want to avoid hypoglycemia but we also need to avoid the high, high risk uh, higher compl sugar complications such as diabetic ketoacidosis or hyperglycemic hyperosmolar state. We need to protect people's feet because they remain at risk of foot complications. Uh, we need to avoid the dehydration that can come from patients who have got a high blood glucose level as a high sugar can cause people to feel very thirsty. Uh, within the uh, guidelines and within the uh, available information on most of the medical wards in our palliative care packs, uh, there is reference to guidelines um, depending on the type of diabetes and the treatment that our patients are receiving. Generally patients who've got type 2 diabetes that are either diet controlled or only on metformin uh, who are approaching their end of their life we can stop their medication um, and have a conversation with the family about whether we need to continue uh, glucose monitoring. For patients on a more, more complex regimes, uh, it's likely again that we want to stop their tablets and maybe any non-insulin injections known as the GLP-1s. Um, if the patient is already on insulin, again there's an option to stop that depending on what the patient's blood sugars have been doing and what the patient's and family's uh, priorities are. Um, in those situations, it may be appropriate to change their usual insulin regime over to uh, once a day long acting insulin, such as uh, Lantus or one of the alternatives. If you need any support in making that decision, then you can always reach out to the diabetes specialist, nurses, and the team in the hospital. For patients with type 1 diabetes, we have to remember that insulin is there not only to keep the blood sugars under control, but to prevent the development of ketosis and ketoacidosis. And in these patients, it's essential that we do not stop uh, the insulin. I would generally recommend that their regime is changed again over to a once daily, or they continue on with their once daily long acting insulin. And we would usually recommend just once daily glucose monitoring to ensure that we're keeping a blood sugar somewhere between around 6 and 15, as this reduces the likelihood of there being either a low blood glucose or the blood sugar going high enough to cause any symptoms. Again, if any support or advice is needed, please do reach out to the diabetes team. So thank you again for your time this afternoon. We've talked through the uh, six steps to insulin safety. And if you do require any more information around the management of diabetes for patients at the end of life care, then please do have a look at the guidelines produced by Trend UK.